meeting to order. Um, Trustee um, Morris, would you like to lead us in the pledge? Okay, sounds good. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, let's start our um, roll call. Uh, Trustee David is not here. Um, Trustee Hankin? Yeah. Uh, Trustee Manning is not here. Um, Murkowski Hines is here. And Miss um, Morris? Yeah. Um, can, I'd like to make a motion to excuse Trustees uh, Manning and David. They both um, let us know that they would not be here prior to the meeting. Um, can I get a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So um, next we're going to move on to approval of our minutes from the last meeting. So if you guys want to take a couple minutes to check through the minutes, see if we need to make any additions or changes. Thank you. Okay, a second. Thank you. We have a, uh, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right, so um, let's go on now to our um, any public comments on agenda items. Okay. Um, any public comments from the floor? Okay, hearing none, move on to director's report. All right, Madam President, members of the Board of Trustees, it's good to be with you this evening. I have several items I'd like to report on. Regarding the library strategic plan that was presented by Sarah Roberts last month, there will be more extensive follow-up regarding the plan during the October library board meeting, including more specific measurable goals that will be shared with the board at that time, and on how we intend to begin moving forward with the strategic plan. <laughs> Officially, technically, it runs from 2022 to 2025. Uh, Sarah Roberts and I have begun discussing in a spreadsheet format uh, measurable objectives on how to get, how to reach each of the uh, goals within the plan. Uh, there will be some further discussions with library uh, team members, especially the managers, uh, talking about those those goals. And then moving forward, starting with October, um, there will be regular updates to the library board about progress on each of those those goals. <clears throat> Next item, this year's summer reading program ran officially from June 7th to July 30th. As a reminder, the library provides incentives for reading during the summer months with different age categories being our focus of children, teens, and adults. As part of my director's report this evening, <clears throat> I have asked Jamie Lee Beck, Assistant Library Director, and Ellen Smith, Youth, Youth Services Librarian, to prevent some more detailed information about how the program went this summer. So I'll turn some time over to Jamie Lee and Ellen. So Ellen is going to be passing out some literature with our numbers and statistics for this year's summer reading program. Uh, she came in just at the beginning of the summer reading program and really Thank took you. on a brunt of the work. So really happy there. So similar to previous years, we did summer reading online this year using the book points online 
platform to have people register and record their time. Uh, there was a couple of things that we're hoping to fine tune later on um, regarding that system or maybe using a different one um, because we definitely want to maintain the online element. It makes it accessible to a lot of people who otherwise probably couldn't get to the library. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to steal your thunder. I was getting ready my other paper, sorry. Um, so, if you want to read off the uh, The kids' summer reading, um, we got 177 readers. Uh, for the teens, we got 52. And for the adults, we got 75 for a total of 304. And we did it on a, the kids' summer reading was based in 20-minute increments, and this is where sometimes it got a little confusing. Um, the kids did their summer reading on, in 20-minute increments. Teens were hour and adults were an hour, so sometimes a parent would put down, you know, three hours <laughs> and get three 20 minute increments or somebody would put one 20 minute increment and put down an hour so it got a little um hazy so we had to people were very honest about it we were able to go back and correct quite a few things um, we did prizes such as uh, five dollar gift cards for people who weren't comfortable with coming in the library still but also physical goodie bags that people could pick up when they got to a certain badge level and then for the adults and the teens they also had a goodie bag for a halfway point and then um oh yes so on the second sheet is the badges which shows you how much they read the higher the badge the more reading they did um so with a registration of 177, we had 60 completions. So 60 people or 60 kids managed to get to uh, badge 10. Uh, for adults, it was 75 registered and 20 managed to get all the way to completion. And for teens, is 52 registered and 15 completions. And when they completed is when they got the, the big prize. So for... The kids, they got a second goodie bag that was just, you know, some of the nicer prizes that they could get. For the teens, they entered into a raffle, so that way they could get a $25 gift card to, like, Starbucks, Barnes & Noble, and for adults, it was a $50 gift card for Barnes & Noble, Target, and also for um, Yard House. So... And for the end of summer reading, I don't know if I'm stealing Robert's thunder. <laughs> for the end of summer reading, we also did one of our first in-person programs. So we did the Harry Potter event, which Ellen planned, and we had a really good turnout. Mm -hmm. About 300. Um, well, we had them uh, come in through the door and grab a bag, um, kind of trick-or-treat style. Um, and we had four different tables set up in the um, four different Hogwarts houses. Um, so they could go to like, Gryffindor and get an activity and some coloring sheets, activity sheets, put them in their bags, um, and uh, so on and so forth with all the other tables, uh, ending with a cupcake. So. Kids were really excited. They got to take home some activities, some activity sheets, and coloring sheets, and cupcakes. <laughs> and they even had a trivia quiz to earn a really big prize. Yes. Uh, which was actually donated by a patron, uh, which was a one of those really big, nice box sets of Harry Potter in the trunk. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, That's so cool. I think yeah. we, we looked it up. It was like a value of $160. Or yeah, like that. yeah, it was up there. And she gave it to us for free because she saw that we were doing a Harry Potter event <laughs> and she wanted to donate. So she also donated some like Harry Potter mm -hmm. um, party supplies that we mm -hmm. used for the event. And yeah, that was really cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, the units completed part, does that mean that there were 107,026? 20 minute units? Correct. 
So that's like over two million minutes. That's a lot. <laughs> yep. Because it, it was great because it wasn't like they stopped when they got to badge 10. Mm -hmm. um, some of them kept going. Mm -hmm. So that was really nice. That's fabulous. Congratulations. So um, talking about the program that you were using with points, do you use like accelerated reader or renaissance learning or um, what what because you were saying there's problems with the different age groups you know i'm kind of wondering what you're what you're using and kind of what what you're thinking of maybe going to because of that problem in the future you have any ideas on that the the website that we used this time was book points um there were another there was another website that some of the other um libraries in our network used um, that, uh, I cannot recall, Bean, Beanstalk? Beanstalk, yes. Beanstalk, yes. Um, and they either didn't seem to have the same kind of problems we did or didn't discuss them as much in the meeting that I went to. Um, so we are thinking of maybe checking that out, one, that, that one out next year, um, or if there's a bit more, um, user-friendly updates to uh, book points and perhaps staying with that. Yeah, when you're doing all that kind of work, you don't want to have it make it even more confusing. So, yeah, I hope that what you use next year will be easier for you guys to keep track of. That's pretty impressive what you guys pulled off. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty good summer reading program, so congratulations. Quick question. Um, what lessons do you learn in regards to hopefully like increasing the participation? We had lots of people who registered, but it seems like a, in relationship to how many people actually badged and completed it. What did what accounts for that? Did we did we learn anything? Anything we should do different or? Um, we did seem to, I think, learn that um, maybe more people wanted the gift cards than we anticipated. Um, so that might be a good incentive uh, moving forward to next year. Maybe have uh, fewer of the goodie bags, more of the uh, gift cards as an option, perhaps. As you gather, there are networks of librarians, library staff across the country that will share ideas and information. And uh, both Jamie Lee and Ellen have been a part of those discussions, and that's where ideas such as using uh, Beanstalk will probably be the the uh, platform that we use next year. Really appreciate <clears throat> uh, these two librarians' work on the summer reading program. And I always get excited, too, when teens and adults are reading. <laughs> and so uh, there's some good numbers there as well. And those are our, our increments. The, the next item I wanted to report on um, briefly is, for information, in-person story time sessions began this week. So we are excited to have them return for in-person in story time sessions. Uh, Ellen, as a youth services librarian, she supervises that program and the story time lead uh, team members who actually conduct the story time sessions. So I wanted Ellen to give a brief report on how that's gone this week, please. I'm not working yet. Because apparently, like, making handouts. Um, so, so much? I just, I'm a very visual person, so I assume everybody is visual too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Doesn't count if there's no pictures. Alright, so week one of fall story time went well. We had 20 people in the bilingual story time, 25 for the toddler. And eight for preschool, but it's because all of them wanted to go to the first two. <laughs> uh, from this, we had um, 
a child that had previously started a thousand books before kindergarten actually come back and complete it, so that's fun. And we had five new sign-ups for the thousand books before kindergarten, which you will see the flyer for on page three. Um, we are kind of rebranding, relaunching that, so we are um, kind of getting everything new and uh, planning a future event trying to kind of relaunch it so that's really going hand in hand with our story time um there was a lot of kids after the story time that the uh the lead noticed um went into the library got more books or signed up for uh, a new library card so it's helping to kind of facilitate new people to come into the library and then there's a flyer for the story time. So all in all, it went well. Everybody wore a mask. Everybody was polite. Congratulations on that. <laughs> Thank you. This is really nice. You did a great job on these. Thank you. I really, really appreciate too. <laughs> I really appreciate Ellen's work as well as uh, Fawn Kimball and Maria Martinez. They are the story time ladies that, that actually do the story time sessions. Put a lot of work into the preparation, visual aids, songs that they teach the children. A lot of information is also shared with the adults because that is, I think, the most important thing that happens. <laughs> <laughs> during our story time sessions, as important as the session is itself. The adults that come are coached and mentored on how to teach literacy at home when they leave the library. And, uh, and our staff members do a great job of uh, educating the adults, the parents that are there. I'm glad that Ellen included information about 1,000 books before kindergarten. If you recall, if you've been in the library or if you recall, we have a rocket ship a banner on, on one of the walls. And and that has served us well. We're actually looking to, as Ella mentioned, rebrand and revitalize Thousand Books Before Kindergarten. We That's one of the goals in the strategic plan uh, is to revitalize that and increase its numbers. And as a, uh, as kind of a teaser, if you will, um, I intend, we intend that in the future You'll get more information as we go forward, but in the future, uh, I intend to invite the parents and the child that reaches a thousand books before kindergarten to come to a library board meeting to be recognized here. We did the, the very first one that we had that achieved that here in Palmdale, made a big deal out of it, and we actually had them go to the city council meeting, and, and that was fun. Now, we've had several complete since then. We haven't done that sort of thing, but as I thought about it, this is where <laughs> we need to recognize them, so we'll plan to do that in the future. Um, okay, thank you both. You're welcome, certainly, to stay, but uh, I'm going to continue on. Several library trustees, two friends, board members, and Jamie Lee Beck and Ellen Smith and I attended the Serving with a Purpose conference in Ontario, California on September 1st. Excellent and informative presentations were given and exciting ideas were discussed. Some of these ideas may be coming forth in the form of proposals either by library staff, friends initiatives, or trustee suggestions uh, at a later time. Since the July library board meeting, <coughs> the library has sponsored and hosted two story time in the park programs at Ponset Lawn Square. Each program had about 40 attendees and was very much appreciated. Also, since that July board meeting, the library hosted a very well-received and well-attended Harry Potter birthday bash, as was already reported on. And I will also add that staff members and the members of the public were invited and encouraged to dress in their best Harry Potter attire. <laughs> and, uh, and that adds to the fun and a lot of uh, photo opportunities were taken advantage of. <clears throat> the people just really appreciated uh, being there, <clears throat> having that to, to attend. Uh, finally, the library continues to gradually reintroduce various in-person programs. For your information, upcoming programs include 
Talk like a pirate day on Wednesday, September 15th, so next Wednesday. This program is primarily intended to promote and market <coughs> Mango language services, <coughs> which is an online program <coughs> available to library card holders that enables patrons to learn over 70 different languages, including English. It is a fun event that the library has sponsored before, and we look forward to bringing it back again uh, this year. <clears throat> Additionally, for your information, a horror film festival week in October is being planned for. We have no idea how many people will attend. We know we will not serve popcorn. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, Jamie Lee is taking the lead on planning that. Uh, you'll get more information at the next, at the next month's meeting. But it will be the week before uh, Halloween, uh, Monday through Thursday. We'll show a different movie each evening. For information, the library will be hosting a Halloween slash Day of the Dead event on Friday, October 29th. More details will be coming about that. Uh, but we were able to do that last year as a grab and go outside of the library. So we will do something again this year. Also, the library will host a patron holiday party in December. More details about these special programs will be forthcoming. And for your information, the library will also be attending several outreach community events as we get invited or learn of them, including the City Pumpkin Walk at Dominic Masari Park on Friday, October 22nd. We've been invited. We'll have a booth there. And uh, just learned today at, uh, I was able to attend a chamber luncheon and learned about some other outreach events that we'll probably participate in. And on that note, <clears throat> I, I took my 30 second spotlight time at the chamber luncheon to talk about what we've been doing, including uh, the return of um, story time sessions. And after the luncheon, a, a, a grandma came up and told me, I'm so happy to hear story time is back. I've been going to Quartz Hill Library. They're still closed. I've got grandchildren that need story time, and so she'll probably be coming to see us. That concludes my report. Any questions about anything that I've reported on? Good job. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Robert. And uh, we'll move on now to any staff comments. None tonight. Okay. By the way, I went and... I did see that um, the mariachi medal. Oh gosh, that was great. That we had so much fun. They were so much fun. You do such a great job over there with that stuff. And I was so surprised um, all the food options too. Those were awesome. So I know my neighbors were talking nice stuff about it as well. Um, trustee comments. Um, what, do you have any that you would like to share? I just wanted to make note that the, uh, Los An the gigantic Los Angeles Public Library System has done away with their fine policy. <laughs> oh. So we've, we were trailblazers. Uh, no, I, I, just, I just heard about that. I did see that. Yeah. Trustee Morris, did you have any comments? Nothing that I can think of right now. Thank you. No. Okay. <laughs> I, have, I have no comments either. Um, so I guess we're at adjournment. Uh, I'd like to adjourn the meeting. Are we there already? Really seriously? <laughs> is that a record? <laughs> I think this is a record today. Um, I'd like to adjourn at um, at five fifty three. Thank you. Thank you.